Okay, we are here with uh, Jerry Marcellino and his wife Don. Uh, we are in Sicily, Italy. Uh, we have spent a few days at the um, Coromdale Conference 2014. Jerry, uh, would you like to share about your ministry and what you do in Mississippi? <clears throat> I've been the lead pastor of the preaching pastor at Audubon Drive Bible Church, which is about two hours north of New Orleans, Louisiana. I've been there for 21 years, uh, very thankful for the ministry, opportunity we have there, God's using us, and, and we're very thankful for uh, the privilege to serve Christ there. I'm originally from California, and through God's mercy, I went to ministry in Baltimore for five years, and then now since 1993, been in Mississippi. What about Fire Fellowship? Can you explain something fire, about that? Fire uh, Fellowship, uh, or the Fellowship of Independent Reformed Evangelicals, uh, was a vision that uh, myself and Jim Neuheiser from Escondido, California, uh, we found each other, I shared my heart about what I would like to see in an association of churches. He said he had the same heart, and we put our, our, our minds together, our prayers together, and uh, in God's mercy we, we launched it uh, with an exploratory meeting in 1999 in Escondido. We constituted a year later in Chicago near Wheaton, and uh, FIRE continues to increase its health and to mature as a movement of Calvinistic Baptistic brethren who do not pool money but intentionally, but, but who desire to collaborate and network together for uh, not only healthy uh, biblically preaching churches, but also in Baptistic churches, but also helping brethren in reforming their churches that could join individually that way without voting. But then there are member churches, and we ha are represented in 15 countries and over 40 states in the United States. It's an intentional evangelistic uh, world missions movement, which I'm glad, uh, Andrea, your, your church in Mantova is a member. Yeah. Uh, Marcelino. It's Marcelino. It, Marcel <laughs> and Italy. Is there any connection between <laughs> Italy and your second name? Uh, of course. Uh, in fact, uh, after having ministered here in, in uh, Sicily for a couple uh, for a couple of days at the conference for Coram Dale, these last three days, uh, I was I'm part Sicilian and part Calabrese, and so we were able to meet some of our relatives who were fishermen uh, over a hundred years ago uh, when my uh, grandparents uh, immigrated from Chaka, Sicily, and. And so, yeah, so I have a Sicilian and then a Calabrese or Calabria. Uh, Mark Cellino is from a, a Jewish uh, Ladino city uh, on the Ionian Sea near Siderno and uh, Reggio. And so, anyway, that's, that's my heart's for Italy. I'm Italian and, and part Jewish and very thankful that Christ has saved me. And also, he, even though a pastor in Mississippi, he's given me a heart uh, for world missions and in particular in Italy, given the priority to Italy, and I'm so thankful my church has given me the freedom to follow the Lord's leading there with my wife. All right. Don, now that you have been here in Italy a few times, can you understand more about your husband's uh, uh, background and DNA? Absolutely. It explains everything. <laughs> the driving? The driving. <laughs> found out last night the, um, the uh, possessiveness of his wife. That's very Sicilian. All right. And, uh, yeah, loud. Uh, <laughs> it's very natural. Strong. So, you would say that the speed limits are here for what? Uh, they're just a government suggestion. <laughs> speed limits, just right. Speed limits, the stop signs, the red lights, just a suggestion. We all drive like Mario and <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, well, what kind of idea do you have about the spiritual needs of Italy? I mean, less than 1% of the population is evangelical. Uh, how do you feel about that, having Italian roots, and how do you perceive the, uh, the sense of uh, the spiritual, spiritual situation in Italy? I think the great need of Italy is very much like what I've discovered in other places I preach throughout the world, and that is the great need is for uh, pastors who are able to preach 
uh, the gospel soundly and also to build healthy churches. So training indigenous pastors is a, a great need that I, I see. And with Italy, uh, with 60 million people and 1% or less uh, evangelical, it's a great need to, uh, to be involved uh, with uh, evangelizing and strengthening the hands of the churches in Italy. I'm so thankful for Coram Deo because uh, the importance of publishing solid works, uh, especially reform works, in uh, Italian, as well as uh, hosting conferences with capable preachers to uh, encourage the church and strengthen uh, the leaders. And then, of course, also uh, church planting. Church planting is very, very important as well. And so the commitment then, I think, is, is, is very important to get behind the work in both Italy and Sicily. Mm. Um, how Corondeo could impact the Christian life in Italy? Uh, you have been here and you, you met a lot of churches and pastors. The, the conference in Milan last week and this week, we, we saw a good crowd of people join us. Um, do you think the people here are receiving well the Word of, word of God? Yeah, I see a very strong openness, uh, both in the North and the South. But especially, we're very excited to be a part of the, uh, of the conference in Sicily. This isn't unusual to have a conference this large, uh, probably 300 people at least, uh, in, in Sicily. This, in fact, no one could remember the last evangelical conference uh, here, let alone mm -hmm one of this size. So there's a great openness. There's a lot of young Sicilian pastors mm -hmm. who are very teachable and who want to be trained. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I believe Sicily is open doors, but also all of Italy, northern Italy. Uh, again, it's a different a different type of Italian uh, in the sense that the, it's, just, it's just the north. And, and But yet we saw in Milano a, a, a strong receptivity to the, the hunger for the Word of God. And so I think, uh, again, I, I see Sicily as, as an open door right now. And again, appreciative of, of Coram Deo and their vision because I believe this is an opportune time to strike while the doors are open. Okay. How do you think the brothers of your country in the U.S. can pray and support and be involved in the ministry here? Yeah, of course, I think the most important is prayer. And, and, and being uh, aware of the needs through Coram Deo, uh, through following our website, uh, Coram Deo, I guess, dot com dot il, right? And so uh, it's, that's crucial, but also um, giving financially toward publications, sponsoring uh, different books to be published, uh, as well as supporting the overall work of Coram Deo is crucial as we need uh, to supplement our uh, expenses for conferences. We don't want money to be an obstacle for people to attend these conferences. We want to charge a minimal cost. And so uh, churches of a smaller nature could take us on in projects, uh, you know, sponsoring different things. Some may be able to take a monthly basis, make a donation, but I really think it's a worthwhile investment. It's, it's a great opportunity. I uh, appreciate Andrea's, uh, you, you, Andrea, your leadership, uh, I think it's so important that the churches in America consider uh, Italy as a true mission field and as a wise investment in the kingdom of God. Yeah, thank you. Would you say that Italy is a Christian country and uh, because the Pope is here, everybody is uh, newborn again? Now, Italy is not a, uh, I mean, it's not in the Christian, in the biblical sense. But there, because um, Catholicism is not really taken serious here anymore, uh, because most people kind of are like Christian atheists, they, they would rather not be a part of uh, the Catholic Church. It's kind of dying, but it's still there. It's, uh, it's such a, a monolithic uh, institution. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, there are people that would say they, they believe in Jesus, uh, but have never been taught the Bible. So... Uh, so I, I see the, the need being great, and it's not a Christian nation by definition, as I said earlier, but it's a, it's a, it's a place where a Judeo-Christian worldview is 
is readily accepted. That's right. Don, you came here and during the conferences you had the chance to talk with the ladies. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the theme of your message and uh, how did you feel to talk with these ladies that basically don't have any chance to have been taught and uh, been disciples as uh, women or uh, wives or mothers? Well, the theme of the conference was on holiness and, and uh, the pastors, my husband and Mr. Curran, um, did a lot of different messages on holy living and and knowing God. So we, Cindy and I both, just wanted to talk to the women about the importance of reading the Word of God and, and not doing it for works, not doing it because the Holy Spirit inside of you tells you that you should, and so you check it off the list, but doing it with heart, doing it consistently reading God's Word a lot because it is all about worship. It's not about works. It, it's about worship. And they need to hear that message because Catholicism teaches them so much. They, they have this guilt conscience of, oh, I need to do this, or I didn't need to do that. And uh, um, as Christians, we all need to learn to function under the economy of grace and to respond to the Holy Spirit as, as He moves our heart to obey from love. And, and so, you know, I was just sharing with the women, how can you know what God wants you to do? How can you respond with your heart? Well, by knowing Him, and we know Him from His Word. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a sure Word. And um, so, you know, the women were, they, you trust the Holy Spirit to, it's hard to go through an interpreter and to know them what they're receiving, but um, the women, for sure, you could sense were very touched that someone even cared to come here, especially in Sicily, but in all over Italy, you, they find, the Italians find a way to communicate that they're very lonely. Um, it, it meant so much to them that someone from another part of the world would come and would, and would bother to spend life with them, to eat their food, to love them, to share the word of God with them, to share worship with them. And they're so thankful. And so many women at the end came up and said, please pray for Shaka. Please pray for Sicily. Please pray for Italy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm, and not only in talking to women, but some of the young men, I, I, I find that they, um, it's, there's so much oppression here because there's so few Christians. The younger people are looking for Christian mates. Um, the older ones are... You know, trying to make it in a counterculture, and so many of them say, "Oh, we want to come to the United States. Oh, we'd really like to move to the United States," and to encourage them to stay here and and have the hope and the encouragement of evangelizing their own country, we need to be. Able